Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Projo and today we're going to be taking a look at a $550 editing and live streaming PC. Quick note, this PC will not play games, I'll focus more on the actual aspects of editing and live streaming, so this will be a great build if you're planning on playing console and want to edit, record or even live stream at 1080p 60fps without any hiccups. Now because of this, I haven't included a GPU because you really don't need one, but instead a really powerful CPU. Now for $550 odd dollars, or even $500 if you take a bit out, this is an excellent build and hopefully will help some of you out. Now for recording console, you will need a capture card, but I'll leave that up to you. And again, I'll have some guys on that if you need some advice. I'm not going to be including rebates, so the price change should be marginal. And if you have more questions, place them down in the comments below. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of the build. For this, we've got a CPU and we've gone with the Intel Core i7-4790 3.6GHz quad-core processor. The processor costs $293 and it's going to be the heart of our build for rendering, streaming, etc. If you live near a micro center, you can pick this up for as cheap as $250. And this is a 4-core with hyper-threading, so it does have 8 threads in total. Now, as you've probably noticed, this is the non-overclockable version of the infamous i7-4790K that I've recommended before. Now, the difference between this and the 4790K is that the 4790K is overclockable and has a 0.4GHz base clock boost, or improvement over this one. The 4790K is basically its older brother. Now, for the most part, you won't notice a difference, and going with a non-overclockable version saves us around $50. Not to mention that it does have a boost clock of 4GHz. So for all of you non-techies, this means that when the CPU is under stress and performing a lot of tasks, it can push itself to the base clock of the overclockable version. Anyway, when you're live streaming and editing, you want to go with the best CPU you can get. And this is where we've spent the majority of our budget, and due to how streaming works, the CPU is the most important part. This CPU will not hiccup, and if you can't afford this, then maybe look into an older i7 with hyper-threading or an i5. That said, with all your encoding and processing the CPU has to do, you probably won't get the same results and will have to step down your frame rate to 30fps or your resolution is 720p if you go with an i5. That is if you're streaming heavy games like Battlefield and titles similar to that. Now I did consider going with the AMD FX 8350 because of the 8 cores, but there are two problems with this. One is that it has a really bad IPC or instructions per clock and this means that it can't do as many things per clock than an Intel CPU, which in streaming is extremely vital. Now the way it compensates for this is by having a really high clock speed, but it's still not the same. The second issue is that the AMD chips, besides their APUs, don't have any integrated graphics. So whilst we're using onboard graphics for Intel, if we went with AMD, we'd have to get a separate graphics card. And for the MOBOs themselves, which are somewhat a little bit more expensive as well. So in essence, we'd be paying the same price and getting worse performance, which obviously isn't worth it. So I just brought up integrated graphics, and I just want to bring that up a little bit more. Now in our case it means that we don't have to get a GPU and the CPU does come with Intel HD 4600 graphics where you would plug your monitors into the motherboard instead of the graphics card. Now whilst this gives really bad performance for running games, we're just going to be using it to run our monitors of which it can handle up to 3 at the same time and this is on a 4th gen CPU which means that we can utilize faster Intel QuickSync and OBS as well as having faster MPEG video encoding, OpenGL support and for being virtually free you can see what we don't need anything more. Now for an older generation like the Intel 400 graphics that you get in some of the older chips, this is roughly a 39-53% to 53 increase in synthetic performance. Now I just want to quickly mention that Intel QuickSync in layman's terms is a hardware processing feature where the CPU uses the onboard graphics to encode or transcode information when you're streaming. Now you're probably scratching your head and asking yourself, well what does this actually mean? Now what it does is it uses the onboard GPU to do H.264 encoding and this drastically reduces CPU usage. Then again the quality is lower than X.264. And this means that overall you do have the option, but with the CPU you've got no problem pushing great quality on the regular X264 encoding method. Now since the CPU does come with a stock cooler and we're not going to be doing any overclocking, we don't need to buy an aftermarket cooler. It's an option if you find the one they give you too loud, but it'll work for what we're using it for. And so for the motherboard, we've got the ASRock H97M Pro 4 Micro ATX LG 1150 motherboard, costing us $63. Now this mobile is in a small micro ATX form and so the overall form factor of the PC will be smaller and less intrusive. And it is on the H97 chipset which means it's almost identical to a Z97 board but doesn't support overclocking. And since the CPU doesn't support overclocking, this isn't going to be a problem for us and means that we can save some money by not paying for features that we don't need. Although it is a micro ATX board, it has 4 memory slots instead of the usual 2, so that you do have the option to add more RAM in the future if you want for something like editing, or if you find the kit I've included is enough. The memory type on this MOBO is limited to 1600MHz, and now if you're playing games using only integrated graphics, this will be a huge problem as it's not fast enough, 
but for running monitors and offloading data from the RAM, this will not hinder nor affect the performance. So I really wouldn't worry about the max supported RAM speed unless you're using an APU or something similar for playing games. But again, if you're doing that, just, just don't. Now max supported memory is 32GB, even though that you'll only need about 8GB maximum, pushing it for 16 if you want more in the future. And does support Crossfire, but not SLI. Now in regards to that, I really wouldn't worry about it since we're not including a GPU, but if you were to add two AMD GPUs or a single Nvidia GPU, you do have the option for that. I'm not personally a fan of Crossfire, let alone SLI, the option if you ever find yourself in need, it's there, you know. Now for the MOBA, you also have Ethernet, as to be expected, which you should be using for streaming, and also has onboard USB 3.0 headers for front panel USB 3.0. This does hold significantly faster speeds than USB 2.0. And for back panel IO, you have two USB 2.0, four USB 3.0, Ethernet, audio, optical audio, HDMI, DVID, VGA, and lastly, a PS2 port. As a final note, you do have six 6 per second SATA ports, for connecting up to 6 internal hard drives or SSDs. Now for RAM we've got the Crucial Ballistic Sport 8GB, 2x4GB, DDR3 1600 memory coming in at $28. I don't really have much to say about this since it is just RAM but it is the cheapest DDR3 8GB kit at a speed that's at 1600MHz and even has some nice heat spreaders. To be truthful, RAM isn't too important when streaming but editing it really is. OBS won't use more than a gigabyte, but I'd still recommend 8 gigabytes of RAM over 4 since it'll make a difference in rendering by a mile. Now, OBS plugins and sources will slash might affect the RAM usage to being more consuming. Again, 8 gigabytes is plenty, so just go with that. Now, for storage, we've got two devices. The first being an SSD, which is the Adiator Premier SP550 120 gigabyte 2.5 inch solid state drive. This does cost us $40 and has a good balance between price and speed where you're saving about £10 or more if you're going with a Samsung or Kingston. So for this SSD, it's we're going to be installing all of our OS and primary applications, such as your editing programs, OBS, and the rest. Now this isn't a lot of space to be honest, but you can always add more, and for this purpose it is enough. If you don't have $550, then you can always remove this, use the other drive I'll suggest in a moment, and when you have money, just add another one. From there, you can use a free SSD migration tool. It's not as difficult as you think, and getting an SSD will also make the overall experience better especially when you're booting the computer or loading applications. Now the second is the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 3.5-inch 7200 RPM internal hard drive, costing us $50. Now this is a great drive and will be a mass storage solution for your PC. This is where you'll keep all of your video files, edits, gameplays and other archives on here. This along with the other models has a really low fail rate and Western Digital are extremely reliable. When you pair this with an SSD, it's a killer combination between speed, capacity and price. 1TB for a lot of people will be more than enough. Now at this point, I'd normally recommend a GPU, but for streaming, it's not that important and doesn't do too much. Now okay, so to clarify, OBS does use the GPU for things like compositing all the different layers into one stream, scaling, and anti-aliasing. The thing is, is that the CPU can handle all of that, and whilst it might reduce the CPU load a little by going with a GPU, it's not worth spending an extra $100 or $120 for something like a 650 or an even more expensive GPU. For editing, GPUs either support CUDA or OpenCL, but unless you're using Adobe Premiere, you don't really need it. For example, Sony Vegas does have the option, but it doesn't support the majority of newish GPUs. If you have the money, then sure, go and invest in the 750Ti or something like that. But it's really not necessary, and I can't imagine it being a worthwhile improvement. So next we have the case. Now for the option I went with is the Cougar Spike Micro ATX Mini Tower case. It does cost $34 and is perfect for the price. It's also a small Micro ATX case, and so it requires less space than a mid-tower, not to forget that it does also support USB 3.0 for front panel I.O. Internally, it has room for two drives, so you will need to buy a cheap 3.5-inch to 2.5-inch adapter for your SSD to be secured into the case. It does have room for two 5.25-inch bays for something like a hot swap caddy, DVD drive, etc., and an external 3.5-inch drive bay for something like a card reader. Now overall, this is an extreme budget case, and whilst it does lack some features like good cable management and more drive base for the price, it's definitely not bad. And lastly, we need a power supply. Now in this case, I went with the EVGA 430 watt 80 plus certified ATX power supply, costing us only $34. Now right now with a promo, you can get it for $24, and 430 watts is more than enough since we're not gonna be using a dedicated graphics card. This isn't the most impressive PSU, but it's cheap, has 80 plus efficiency, and has still enough juice if you wanna add something like a 750Ti. Overall, the price of this build is $551.82, but when you factor in rebates, it goes down by 20, and if you live near a micro center, the overall bill will be $60 cheaper. I can't exactly show benchmarks since we're not planning to be running games in this, 
and synthetic ones like Cinebench or Passmark won't really help you out. This build won't have a problem in streaming 1080p 60fps or rendering in Premiere, After Effects or Sony Vegas at all. Anyway guys and girls, this has been Proto and hopefully you have enjoyed this week's video. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them and if you do have any requests, leave them down in the comments below. And next week's video is going to be the start of a Sony Vegas editing series and I hope you're all hyped for that. Give this video a like if you've enjoyed it and subscribe for more of my content. This has been Proto, thanks everyone.